Hi friends, it's Linda from Richter Stitcher. Um, I wanted to come on. I've been on floss tube now for two years and at the time I started I was pretty much documenting all the different crafts that I do and I thought I would go ahead and try to separate the, some of the crafts. Most of them you'll find on my YouTube um, floss tubes but uh, like I, I wanted to come on and, and be sure to kind of keep up for my own self and keep track of the different things that I'm, I'm making. But I also love to share with you all the different things that I do. Uh, I haven't been real regular with the quilting just because I noticed throughout the year I tend to sew more towards like the end of the year when it gets closer to Christmas and the holidays and then I am kind of a last minute kind of a person if I know there's someone's birthday coming up then I, I tend to try to quickly make something for someone in the family or a friend so that's kind of me personally how I tend to, to sew I thought I'd give a little bit of a background on how I got started sewing and then kind of go into some of the things that I've done recently. I'm not going to pull out everything that I've done in the past. I've, I've made a few different things and mostly tableware and things like that, but I am in the process too. Like everyone else, I have tons of whips. So behind me on the wall there, I have the things that I've started and want to continue. I just haven't finished them fully. So maybe one of these next quilt tubes, I'll try and record a whip or what do they call them? I guess they call them quilt, or I, I'm not sure what they call them when they're whips for sewing. I, I know there's different terms that you can use when you're uh, in the different crafts. So I will probably do a group and separate them between the, the works in progress as well as the um, haul that will definitely be probably a big portion so some of my quilt tubes I'm hoping to keep them shorter um, with, with the recording just because it, it takes a little bit to edit things if, if you're one of those that do that I wish I could just record and then post it but I always tend to rewatch what I post because you know I guess we get particular about what we we want people to see <laughs> I do try to be transparent though with all the things that I'm doing and, and share with you. Um, <clears throat> I am going to be probably looking down just so that I don't forget to say the things that I want to say and share with you. But like I said, um, introduction uh, to sewing for me was when I was in high school, um, which was many years ago. I'm, I'm getting close to 60. so. I took like home economics when I was in school and cooking class and when we took those classes back then you were required to take like a semester of cooking, a semester of sewing. So that's kind of what sewing was introduced to me through through high school. I, I took home economics class and I really enjoyed it. Uh, back then in the uh, early or late 70s, early 80s, um, I recall it was a lot of clothing things like making skirts and I remember making a blazer, it, I mean, just so that you could learn how to read patterns. So that's what got me started. Um, I kind of, after high school, uh, I married right out of high school, so I didn't really use too many of the skills for sewing. Uh, when I had young children, I do recall making just small things for their, uh, when they were babies. But it kind of moved over into the house wares and the curtains and the bedding. And that's kind of where it stayed um, through the time that, you know, we raised our children. After I had my kids and they graduated from high school, I didn't do a whole, whole lot. I kind of went over to the uh, yarn and the fibers and those kind of crafts. 
after that and, and stuck with the crocheting and things like that. Um, sewing didn't actually come back and into my life. It was probably around 2017, um, just before COVID. I was involved at my church and there was a group that liked to meet weekly and so a lot of people were either sewing or crocheting or knitting and that kind of brought it back and I saved everything from when my kids were younger so I knew I had a lot of supplies. Not a lot of fabrics but getting back into it in 2017 a lot of the ladies you know how we all share with each other I mean we've collected quite a few things in, the, in that period of time so one of the ladies was a quilter and kind of shared with me the things that she was doing <clears throat> invited us to her house to have like a sew day and I got to experience some machines at the time I only had my one Kenmore Sears sewing machine that my mother-in-law had given me back when my kids were little and she just said she she probably was through using it and she passed it on to me and so I've had that one ever since and I still have it and it still works to this day. It was kind of the one that I would go to after I got these other machines because I wasn't familiar with them but that one I was always familiar with so it was just easy to go to that one if I was making a table runner or something like that. But I've enjoyed the process of learning the different things. I still feel like I'm a new sewist. Uh, I'm always learning something but when this lady at church had introduced me to quilting and like the YouTubes and the people that were out there that, that do it I started watching them and kind of fell deep into that and loving the different fabrics that are out there as well. So from 2017 to now um, 2024 I didn't mention today is April of 2024. I think I've made just things that, you know, I've passed on a lot through Christmas gifts and things like that to family members. So I don't have those to share. I mean, if I find pictures that I can insert either at the beginning or during this video, I will. But I do recall making tableware for friends and family. So that kind of has kept me busy the last few years as, as well as all the ones that I've started and not finished. So that's kind of how I got started in into all the, the quilting and the sewing. <clears throat> I'm going to have to get a drink. <laughs> I feel like I'm losing my voice. But uh, because of that, <clears throat> I thought I would just share a little bit of how I got started sewing. And then bring you up to today's um, experiences that I've had. I love finding the quilt shops in the area and recently have found a couple new ones, at least three in the last year, and just gotten involved. And then, of course, there's all kinds of ones that you can go online and find fabrics through. And I do get on and listen to the lives, and sometimes I order things through that. So because of that, I do have a collection of uh, different fabrics through the friends at my church that have passed on fabrics that they don't want anymore and then of course I'm always buying something as you'll see in, in my haul portion. But besides that I thought uh, I'd share just a couple things that I've made in the past and I am a cross stitcher like I mentioned so of course the first things I remember making were you know some project bags <clears throat> and this one was one of my first ones and it's huge because I wasn't sure measurements and things how it would turn out but they're just the basic zip top bags and I might go back with this one especially because it's fairly large and put a handle on it um, but you'll see in a second I have one that has a handle on it that uh, I take back and forth when I go to the lake but I also made a small one to match and I was doing some cross stitches is why I was got into making the project bags. <clears throat> I didn't want to make it too small because I want the whole project with all the flosses to fit inside. So I thought having a separate small one for all the little things inside of the big one would be good. So that was one of the first ones that I made. And just simple sewing. I, I found some trim to put on as well as um, this was 
some fabrics that a friend had given to me that she no longer wanted. And it's kind of that heavier fabric. Uh, I don't know if it's called duck or it's like you could use it for curtains and things. But uh, And then I used like a green for the back to kind of match. So that was one project bag set that I made, one of the first ones. And then I was also into, uh, oh, I forget his name. <laughs> I'll put it below, but uh, I liked the houses and all of the things that he did. So I found uh, some fabrics that I could use to make another set with a smaller bag also. And I, I keep my cross stitch projects in here when I'm, I'm doing one that uh, deals with houses. <clears throat> And then this is the lake one that I mentioned. Um, and this is the one that I put the handle on. And it really is, I put the vinyl on this one. I wanted to try uh, to see if I could do that. So I had a, I think it was one of those curtain bags that you get that, that the vinyl. And I had just saved it. So I just cut that piece out and then tried to use it on my machines. And it, it turned out pretty good. Like I said, it's one of the first ones. And of course, the quilting was, this was the first time I tried to quilt something. And what was funny about this is I didn't realize when you quilt the things, you should go extra big. So that's one of the reasons I made this one so big, because I didn't want it to turn out to be too small, because I had to cut off a lot of the edge the way it, it shrunk once I quilted it. But I, I did enjoy making that and finding the different fabrics that were more lake and, and the blue and white color, which I, I tend to, to go for those colors as well. Um, that Quarter Shop always shares things on their um, YouTubes, and Lori Halt had had, uh, I think it's Scrappiness is Happiness in her book that I had bought, but she was showing a tutorial on how to make one of the blocks, and this is one of the first ones that I made. I didn't realize it was going to be so big. So what I'll need to probably do is make some of the other blocks and see if I can't get enough to put together for a quilt. That would be probably something for my grandbaby. I have a, a two-year-old granddaughter that I think she would lo love to see the different animals and things on a quilt. So this was one of the first ones that I put together, but I haven't actually used it in anything yet. And then... Just recently, another lady on YouTube, Susan Stanley, was doing a doll quilt. And I didn't buy the kits that she had going, but I found some Liberty fabrics that I had purchased online and decided to hand quilt the squares together. And it got down to crunch time, and I ended up having to kind of abandon the hand stitching part of it. But I, I did fully hand stitch the squares together but I had to back it and bind it and quilt it with the machine in order to finish it for my grandbaby's birthday when she turned two this past January. But I was very pleased to get that done and found some fabrics that I thought looked well with the different Liberty fabrics and finished that up. But I would like to continue the hand experience by trying to quilt one all by, my, by hand one day, but... For this one in particular, I, I just was, like I said, last minute sewer and I needed to finish it. So I, I abandoned the hand stitching part of it and went to the machine. Still learning the edging and getting it straight, but I was pleased with it. And of course, it's just for her little doll bed that she has. And I've enjoyed show, showing and sharing the different things that I've made through the last year. And then this is my most recent one that I finished, and I actually made two of them because of cross-stitch again. I've been doing a, a stitch-along with a, one of the friends that I have uh, at Boxcar where we stitch together monthly. Um, Carolyn and I decided to do a cross-stitch together, and I thought having a nice fabric um, zip bag was a good idea. So I used a tutorial online, um, Tiger Lily designs uh, carry uh, had a step-by-step -step, which is the way that I like to find my projects if if it's step-by-step -step, then I really feel like I can do it without any 
you know, confusion. So because of that, I was able to make two of these, and I'll slip in a picture of, of the two that I made. And love the uh, fabrics that I use. Of course, it's got stuff all over the back <laughs> from laying around in places, threads mostly. <laughs> But just a, a cotton back that I used, and then on the inside I I used a uh, a fabric that says needles and threads and things for sewing. I thought the grays went well with the, this particular um, fabrics that I used. I'm trying to remember the name of them. Um, I'll put it below in the description box if if I can think of it, or on the bottom of the screen. But uh, love these particular ones they have different color schemes in all of these but kind of leaning towards more of the reproduction fabrics that I've, I've seen online lately and that's kind of what's caught my eye if it's either reds and blues and I think laundry basket quilts is another one but uh, these ones are really really special that I enjoy making so those are just a a few um, this quilt behind me here on the door was a, a quilt along that I was doing with a few of the friends that I've, I've met, um, Katie from So Tattered, a few people on Instagram that uh, was doing um, a Cheddar and Coal, I think, fabric is what that is, um, but there was a tutorial, they were quilting along together and I decided to jump in. It still needs to be quilted and then sandwiched together. But I did get the top made and very pleased with the colors, and I'll probably put that on my bed once I do get it, it bound up and, and quilted. And that's the other thing. I probably won't send a lot of these out unless I can find someone that I know that isn't too expensive. Otherwise, I'm going to try to hand quilt uh, on the machines that I have. And I don't think I mentioned that besides the Sears uh, <clears throat> Kenmore machine, over those three or four years, I've collected the two singers that are in front of me. They're table singers. Just found them at an antique shop. I think one was like 80 or $90, and then the other one I paid $100 for. And they both said they were in working condition, but when I purchased one of them, my husband had to do a little bit of oiling and things like that to get it to run, but um, and that's actually the one in front of me that he worked on um, and then this one here is also a singer table machine <clears throat> that I purchased at an antique mall <clears throat> excuse me I am losing my voice <clears throat> another drink <laughs> but besides these two singers in the last three years like I said um, one of our, the ladies from my church that we used to meet together weekly and, and cross-stitch, as well as at the church when we would knit and crochet, she had shared with me that she had a featherweight machine that was up in her closet that she only used once and just decided it wasn't for her. And so she showed it to me and I was just, wow, you know, that's, I mean, what do you plan on doing with it? With it? And I asked her if I could purchase it from her and of course, she said, no, no purchase. She said, I'll give it to you. And so I was just thrilled to pieces that she was kind enough to pass that on to me. So, of course, I named it Kathy because that was her name. And then the first thing I sewed on it was a set of four placemats for her in the Dresden plate uh, materials and cut it out. And it took me a few months to do it, but I was able to give that to her and, and thank her very kindly for passing that on and it is my main machine now I'll, I'll go to my Sears Kenmore once in a while but it is a zigzag machine but the featherweight I just really was so tickled to have it that I really wanted to sew on it and it, it sews wonderfully I love the tight stitches that you get with that and I do use one of these singers needs some adjusting but the other one I just used the other week so I am finding myself using them here and there but the featherweight is one of the ones that I tend to to go to <laughs> when I'm making like a project bag or a placemat or a, a table runner or something like that because it's I've gotten to know how to use it in the last two years since I've had it and then the other machine I have is a pink Nelco machine that was given to me also I don't know how I've just been blessed to have friends from church that this one lady had 
got contacted the church in our group that we we sewed and, and knit together with and said that she had her mother's sewing machine and that she didn't sew but she wanted it to go to somebody that would really enjoy it and so that person told them my name and number and they contacted me and asked me if I'd be interested in it and I, I said well I'll, I'll buy it from you and she said no I want to just give it to you and so I went over to her house she was local so I, I picked that up me and my daughter went over and picked that up and like I said it's been three three years now that uh, I've enjoyed all, all three of these machines this is a small craft room that I have so at one time I did have them all closed up in, in the corners of the room but I like to see them and then if they're opened and plugged in then I am more apt to use them on the different projects that I do so because of that having them opened I have four machines in here now and the pink one I have in, in, in my spare room because it just doesn't fit in here <laughs> so I just go over there if I'm going to use it but it is set up in the in the spare room also so I have just been really blessed to have those kind of things to me and I'm hoping to pass them on and like I said I have a granddaughter that I'd love to teach to sew and I kind of dream of someday having three or four ladies here one at each machine and just enjoying a day of sewing but it just hasn't happened yet but I, I would love to do something like that in, in the future um, besides the things that I've made um, I can share this one in front of me that is in process and it's a little different than the other project bags that I'm doing and as you can see probably in, in the pictures I have quite a few blues going on in here so that's why I started this one in the blue but I just thought I'd share um, the quilting on this is as far as I've gotten but I have enjoyed making uh, this one this I think was oh I can't think of her name on YouTube I watch so many different YouTubes but uh, Nicole Spore was doing a project bag that I looked and watched and said I need to really try that because I liked the way that the quilting was on it so I found some uh, two and a half inch squares and told myself this would make the cutest little bag so this is the front and then of course the inside I still need to put in the zipper I'm kind of debating on which zipper to do and then this is the back side here that's gotten all quilted that will be the back and then this will be the inside so I just need to get it put together <laughs> it shouldn't take me too long but like I said getting in here to sew between the cross stitching and all the other different crafts I kind of have to pace myself I think if I put them in a book though and schedule them I, I would have to be get more done but lately it just I'm still at that point where I'm clearing things out and organizing it to know what I have that I haven't written anything down but uh, that was another project that's in the works but that's the only whip that I'm going to share today because of uh, the multitude that I have on the wall would, would take me a lot longer I'm not sure about my camera so I don't want to share too much right now I might pause the video here and then come back and, and share some of the things that I've been up to since I had my last uh, floss tube sharing with the quilting and then share the haul. That way it won't overheat on me. <laughs> but I do appreciate you coming and I think I'll like the process of doing the quilt separate from my cross stitch. That way I can keep up with it a little better and hopefully see some more finishes throughout the year. But for now, let me take a break, and I'll be back with the haul, like I said, as well as uh, the projects that are that I look forward to doing in the next few months and hopefully get some finishes. <laughs> okay, I think we're back. Um, I wanted to put in the section of haul that I've had in my quilting area as well as two projects that I'm going to kind of focus on through this year 2024 um, like I said in, in earlier I tend to find a lot of things through Instagram and the friends that I know that are working on things it's kind of what gets me excited to, to try things and so a couple of the projects that uh, especially through cross stitch that I, I find 
patterns and things. Um, I've mentioned um, that quarter shop and a lot of their quilts that they tend to um, work on or share on their YouTube. They tend to have uh, just the fun part of quilting together with friends. And so I try it and tend to look for the different fabrics like everyone else and it kind of gets you down a rabbit hole pretty much but I do enjoy that and that's kind of what happens with like the quilt tops that I tend to make or uh, floss tuber that I, I really enjoyed and really got started um, from the one friend at church that started sharing all of her stuff with me she introduced me to Pat Sloan on the YouTube and so I started watching all of Pat Sloan's videos collecting her books as well as uh, Lori Holt and people like that that have step-by-step -step tutorials that makes it easy for me to to learn and so because of that like I was saying on Instagram uh, one of the quilters had posted that she was doing a small quilt throughout the year where you make blocks and I think it's Repro Quilter Tara I think is her name or Taryn and she shared like the ones that I'm, I'm doing the blue and white ones behind me she's making maybe 10 a week I think that's what it is throughout the whole year and by the end of the year you have a bunch of little squares to put together into a quilt and I think hers are more of the reproduction type um, but you can make it any way you want and uh, like I've mentioned I love the blue and white so and we are lake people we love to go to the lake in the summertime so I wanted to have that kind of a theme on, on this particular quilt top that I'm making and so I thought the blue and whites would be really pretty I've never done anything like this before especially this small there's options of the different sizes that you can make and I don't think I'm not sure if that's the very smallest it's like one and three quarters but uh, it's pretty tiny I'm enjoying the different styles but it is just the nine patch which is pretty simple to put together for me I'm just learning the different ways that it looks when you put it together and so that's one of the first projects that I am doing and I just thought I would share a few of the things that I use in the process um, of making these. It's just been fun to see the different people post things. And then, of course, I'm a gadget girl. I love to go on and find the different things that are helpful in, the, in using the techniques and things for sewing. Um, but these, in particular, were an Amazon purchase. And they're ice cube trays, really. Um, I'm not sure if you can see this is the name it's called J-R-I-S-B-O ice cube trays but for this particular size that I'm doing the one and three quarters they really do fit nicely inside of these and they're the silicone bottoms so they're kind of pliable so when you take the lid off and these do have these little lids which I like because you can stack them if you need to and I can link these below from Amazon if you're interested, but uh, I've just been cutting out, like I said, the one and three quarter pieces, light whites and and blues, and I'll probably look through my stash here. I've, I've got a whole bucket of uh, just the different types of fabrics, the light blues, and the ones that have maps or anchors, and just I'm cutting out pieces a little at a time, and once I get them into nine pieces, I put them in, in the little tray, and then once they're all filled, I can just take this to my sewing machine and, and sew them up, which I've done with a few, like this is one here, <laughs> and there's rows of threes, so these will just still need to be sewn together in, in the rows, and then once I get that, I take my little ruler and, and cut them into the small pieces that you see behind me and then I just pin them up there and I will hopefully fill that whole board up as well as maybe once or twice and that way I have plenty to uh, 
work with when this is all done. I'm not sure about sashing and binding and backing or any of that yet, but I'll, as it gets closer to the end of the year, I'm hoping to have a little of that figured out. Like I said, I've never done anything like this before, so it'll be fun to kind of see how it turns out for my first time. So those come in packs of four, and that's kind of that project that I'm working on. You can also use these, um, what are they called? People use them for bobbins and things like that. Just storage little containers. You know, I'm just putting certain types once I get them cut into here because these are getting pretty full. I've just only got just one more, one more to fill and I'm going to have to maybe start sewing these ones up and getting them and emptying them. And that's probably the process that I'll do so that I don't have to purchase a bunch of them. I'm just going to keep these four as the ones that I use throughout the year. But that's kind of easy storage, easy to set next to your machine. If you just want to come in here and sew for an hour and see how many you get done, that's kind of how I've been doing it. <clears throat> and I don't sew every day. I, I try to, but if I get in here at least once a week, I'm happy. <laughs> I wish it was more than that, but lately it hasn't been. Just depends. And then summer is on its way, so I'm not quite sure how much time we'll be here at the house, but I am hoping to get, you know, I, like one, one weekend I did a good 30, which I was happy with. And I tend, instead of spreading it out daily, I go in bulk and do 30 here, and then a couple weeks later I'll do another 30. <clears throat> I'm not sure how everybody does it, but that's kind of the way I've been working lately. Oh, and I didn't share, but this is the, uh, see if I can get it to where you can read it once I get a drink because I'm losing my voice. <laughs> I really haven't been talking that long, maybe 30 minutes. <laughs> but I just had printed this out so that you could kind of see if you're interested in following along. It's, it's a yearly project and it's through Instagram, but she has a website you can go to and she, a blog that she shares how to do it she does email you the um if you sign up to, to do this and it's free it's it doesn't cost anything and you use your own fabrics and what you want to to put together but uh she'll email you the the blog and you can go to it and just kind of see the different ways people are doing it but i have enjoyed having that set i guess quilt along to do with something I'm trying not to do too much, so that's why I'm focusing mainly on this one for the yearly project that I'm doing. <clears throat> and I'm sure there'll be rabbit holes throughout the year that I, like the project bags and things that I stop and, and want to do those as well. And then the other one that I thought I was going to do at first because I ended up purchasing the um, Raleigh Blake, what's it called, the Diamond Acrylic Template. Because I was thinking I was going to make each individual diamond, but that'll take me forever. <laughs> and of course, I was on Instagram and I had seen that um, Etsy had a shop, and I don't know if I have the card here, but that had the actual pattern that was the panel as well as the borders. And that's going to go a lot quicker for me. So I think that's probably what I'm going to do for this particular one so that it gets done a little bit quicker. And so that's the panel for the, it's called the Jane Austen Coverlet Quilt. I am a lover of all things Jane Austen, Pride and Prejudice, those kind of things. So when I've seen this, and the colors really are my, my style. I like the browns and the pinks mixed together with the beiges. And so I do have it if I ever do want to make even a different quilt that uses these diamonds. I just haven't attempted, uh, I guess that's considered on point. But because of that, uh, this, if you did it that way, it would finish at 80 by 100, which isn't too large, but large for me because I've never done a quilt top besides this one um, with Cheddar and Cole. Uh, can't think of the YouTuber, but I, I will list her below that gives that particular design that I did. <clears throat> and I really, I really enjoyed doing that. So I know once the panel is done, getting another plan for another quilt top, you know, is what I'll probably do. I mean, I've got one back here that I started, or at least collected all the things to start. And I'm a coffee lover, so because of that, 
it has coffee cups all over it and things like that. So things I know that I will do, it's just I have to do one at a time when it comes to quilting. <laughs> or at least like the yearly one and then stick one in in the middle. So I just was going to share, this is probably getting into haul now, but this is the borders that will go with that. I'm not going to hold it all up, but uh, I was able to get on to, uh, here it is, the Etsy shop and, and get all the pieces that were required to put this together. So it's really a cheater way of doing it, I guess, but I am going to look forward to having it together quick, quickly and be able to actually use it. And Like this one can be my fall quilt on my bed and then I will probably use this one throughout the spring and summer. Just I need to get it done. <laughs> I, I bought the backing as well as the binding. I'm not sure quite how I'm going to do it yet, but uh, I got the ones with the houses. kind of looks like a sampler. And then the ones that have the words from the Jane Austen books. It's called Jane Austen's House. And I forget, I think there's <clears throat> four and a half to five yards here all folded together, but it's the beige colors from Riley Blake is the the one from where I got these. And then like I said, the panels came through Etsy as well as the pattern book. And I didn't, I don't know if I showed it or not. It's called Jane Austen's House. If you're interested in either doing that with each little individual diamond or I can list below the Etsy shop that I found that at, the panel. I'm sure they're out there though if you look. But I, I just love the colors and, and I'm really excited to get that one put together. And with the project bags I also found some Jane Austen fabrics on Etsy. A lot of my shopping I do through Etsy or Amazon. So there was a green color code as well as a blue. And these will either be backings to my project bags or linings. I'm not sure yet, but I did get a couple yards of those. I'm just going to set these here. A few other places I shop at are 123 Stitch. Um, when I go to pick up an order, they usually have fabrics and things in the front that you can look through. <clears throat> and one, one time I had went in the last month or so, they had these, uh, Repro reproduction fabrics, just half yard cuts, but I really liked uh, the look of, you know, of course I love the blue and white, and then the little dots. I thought these would just make, have in my stash and, and make things, bags, whatever, with as well. Hoping this won't get too long, but a couple more things from Hobby House to go along with either a project bag or binding, just depending on what I, how much I need. I found the dots as well as this uh, floral that's really pretty. I'm not going to take them out of the bags. As well as another shop that I'm at, usually weekly, besides going to Aubrey to Boxcar, I end up at, uh, it's called the Old Craft Store seeing if I have that here. Mm, I think it's over here. Yeah. They have lots of fabrics there as well. And it is the month here in Texas where we're doing the Texas Shop Hop. So I've been kind of getting to as many quilt shops as I can and doing that with uh, everyone else. But that's kind of what this all Texas Shop Hop you kind of, I mean, you could go all over the state, but I can't drive around that much. But they give you a quilt block when you go, and then a little stamp to put in your book of the different shops that you've been at. I, I'm going to pick up my sticker tomorrow from one, but I've currently been to, looks like five, with the one that I get tomorrow. And I'm hoping the next couple days to get to two more in the Plano area. That I haven't been to yet so I will have these little they give you one from each shop and I think I'll probably make a table runner out of the blocks that I collect since I'll probably only have one two 
three, four, the one tomorrow will be five, and then if I go to the two in Plano, I'll have about seven of these blocks to just quilt together into either a table run or a table mat of some kind to kind of remind me of 2024's um, Texas Shop Hop, and it is my first year to do something like that, so that's been kind of fun to meet up with a couple people and, and do that, or if I'm out and about doing errands, I tend to look in the book and see if there's a quilt shop that's around me that I can do. But uh, I was saying uh, one of the places I had gone to for the shop hop, it's called Kaleidoscope Quilt Shop, and that's actually on my way to the lake out in Whitesboro, Texas. And got my sticker and went in, and of course it had to get a little something, so I picked up one of these little uh, mini charm packs and this one's uh, back to the basics, so I picked that up from that shop. And let's see what else we have. I got most of my shop hop stuff over here. The one that I go to weekly, like I was mentioning, make sure I keep these things together so they don't get confused. <laughs> um, they have a lot of things there while we're it's more of a hooking group where people learn to rug hook, but when I got started, I was bringing my cross stitch, and I've actually brought my sewing with my uh, nine patches. Everybody brings, you know, whatever they're working on that week, and it's just fun to get together with the ladies, and the quilt shop lets us come there and, and stay about four hours every Wednesday if, if you're available. We, you know, we've had several different people just pop in and start coming every week, so it, it's just been fun. But they have a quilt shop there, so they have fabrics all, all around, and I'm always looking at the different fabrics that they have. So these are just a few of the things that I've purchased over the last few months. This is a... It's like animals that you put together into a little... Um, it's like a little play, how, play thing for kids with all the different animals and it names, you know, each one there's bears. And so I picked that up to make for my grandbaby, probably a Christmas gift that I'll end up giving to who, her or a birthday gift, whichever comes first or whichever finishes first. And then of course they just had some really pretty spring colors <clears throat> that I picked up, you know, a half yard each of probably for project bags. Cause I, I do want to make a lot more with all the different whips that I have to put in them. And then there's another one here that I got was just a, a red that's really pretty. And I can't think of the name of these designers, but uh, I guess I could unfold it and tell you what it says. If it's long enough, it might say. <laughs> I just can't remember a lot of the designer names on these, but I really love the blues and whites like I've mentioned before. So that's why I picked up... Um, these four different uh, fat quarters. Just a lot of the blues and the creams. But I do want to make some project bags out of all of this, so that's why I pick all this up. And of course my stash could always use the nicer fabrics, so that's why I was doing those. And like I said, the name of that store was the Old Craft Store in Carrollton, Texas. They do take orders as well call them if you're looking for a specific fabric. Sorry for the crinkling. This is another, um, where did I get this? I think this was at, actually, I want to say this was at Boxcar. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was um, on our monthly events that we stitch at. Uh, I got another one of these because when you I can make a couple bags with each of these and I love to do the patchwork in the front so that's why I do the small little um, charm packs as well as a couple prints I thought would make a good lining and backing and then Betsy Chechen had one there called Dinah's Delight and I just I love the um, all the different prints that's that's in that one it's just very very springy and I, I love I just love the looks of these prints, so that's why I picked the five inch squares on that one. Another shop that I go to in McKinney, Texas, 
Um, it's a, actually downtown dry goods, or they call it McKinney Knittery. They had a blue and white uh, panel that I could put together similar to the one behind me, but it's in the blue and white, and I'll end up probably looking to do that someday. <laughs> Not sure when. And then I'm always looking at their fat quarters and their sale products, and they had some Christmas fabrics out as well as some reds that I just fell in love with. I'm just going to share them quickly here. And then this one is a Dear Jane print. thought that would be a perfect lining for a bag. And these ones have like little Christmas trees on them. So half yard cuts, and some are fat quarters, some are the pre-cuts, just depends. It would be good to get all this put away. It's been sitting out for quite a while. Another shop I went to for the shop hop was called Linda's Electric Quilters. And they give away things when you go to their shops and I guess you spin a wheel or whatever. And so this was a freebie that was given to me. Really fancy feathers, I think is what it says. So that's just a little book that I can look at and see... Uh, I don't know if it's embroidery or what it is, but um, just a lot of little different uh, things in the book to look at and decide. I guess they're like templates. Yeah, they got, you could trace these. That's what it is. So that would be interesting. I've never done anything like that before. So I will have to look and see how to do something like that. I was really there to get some hobs batting because I don't have a whole lot of batting and like I said I am making the quilting bags but I do want to have some set aside for the smaller quilts that I'm doing as well so this one's an actual fusible cotton batting that is a queen size so I thought that would be perfect for having for one of my quilts that I finish depending on how big it ends up and then I did those I did those there's quite a bit of haul here. I do apologize, but over the last, <laughs> it's at least been four months since I've put anything quilting on my floss tube, so I wanted to share the things that I've been purchasing. Uh, another shop that I, got, I go to regularly, because it's just like 10 minutes away, is Pink Sands Beach Designs. And they're from California, but they moved to the Frisco area here in Texas. And I found them through an app that they were doing and realized they were, how close they were, so I end up buying from them quite a bit. So for the shop hop, they were doing that this year, so I had to go by and pick up a few things. Um, this is just a color wheel. I thought it would be handy to have in my quilt area, just because I love to kind of coordinate the colors and how they go together, and I want to be sure that they don't look strange. But with Easter just recently and spring coming, you know, they had some prints that I just loved and they sell them in half half yard cuts touch of spring just got houses on it and they're panels so I'll end up figuring out you know what to do I mean like this church one is on here and I love houses anything houses so that will be fun to use in something so all this will just go in my stash and of course the Easter ones with the crosses I thought were just gorgeous and in my mint green colors, Easter colors, as well as the lilies and the florals. So I, I kind of went a little crazy on the fabrics there. Uh, they had a lot of these on sale. Yeah, Pink Sands Beach Designs, so I got a lot more. Uh, Blackbird Designs, two and a half inch pre-cuts. Yep, these are all the same. Got two of those. Oh, actually, I got three of those. And then the new one, Ponderosa by Stacy. I don't know how you say that. Stacy Etsu. <laughs> I'm not quite sure, but love the little horses and the western kind of the theme for that. So I picked up, like, what is that? Five different two and a half. So these will make cute bags, I'm thinking. The patchwork type bags. A few more prints here. Oh, and I got a Christmas one called Holly Jolly. <laughs> and they were on sale like $3 a piece, $3.50 I think is what they were selling some of those for. So I, I picked up a bunch. And then I, of course, the blues. Got a couple fat quarters of different prints. The cats, of course, with the dots. 
Moda fabrics mostly is what these are, but I, I just, you know, I've tried to coordinate the different colors. Just kind of go quickly here. Linings and things for the insides as well as the florals on the bags in the front. Yeah, I think bags are in my future. <laughs> and then this check one I also got that was a, uh, kind of goes with the Ponderosa, which I put down here. Just thought for... A backing for a bag would be really cute. So I tried to match up the different things. So let me grab these all and put them in the bag. It will feel good to get these all stacked away into my fabrics. On another book too, maybe I will do how I store my fabrics and pre-cuts because I've found a few uh, storage things that I've, I use as well as it used to be a desk, but I've converted it into storage for my patterns as well as fabric storage. So I'll do a tour of that. And if you go to my floss tube, you could probably also see a tour of my craft room recently in January. I think I redid it to kind of get it more organized so I could be set to sew this year in 2024. But I shared where I put most of my fabrics that I have and like I said I've been collecting them since my kids were little but most recently since 2019 or so I kind of went down the rabbit hole of more fabrics please <laughs> that was a lot of haul and I'm still not done but I think I left off with a few more fabrics here this was at the old craft store my Wednesday go-to and they were cutting up some fabrics for people that had ordered from Camille Ross Kelly and this was all they had left, so I took what they had left. <laughs> and I'm just loving this one. It's uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson, Live in the Sunshine, Swim the Sea, Drink the Air. I guess that's the name on it. But uh, it is a Camille Ross Kelly. I love the blues and whites, so I had to get what they had while I was there. I'm not sure how easy it will be to get any more, but I have, I think it's a, almost, what was it? Uh, not even a half a yard, it's 0 0.38 of a yard. <laughs> That's all they had left. So I did that one. Um, the name of that fabric I mentioned earlier, I couldn't think of it, that I made that project bag out of that was red with the patchwork was called the French General and I went ahead and got a five inch squares charm pack I guess it's called in that particular one because I really like those reds and then uh, Fat Quarter Shop had come also in the last few months Sea Breeze Fat Quarter Bundle from the Laundry Basket Quilts I needed more of the light um, fabrics and of course it's got the blues and the creams and the beiges in there with the browns so I'll use that for something I'm thinking <laughs> just trying to get a nice collection of some fabrics that I really like um, the last bits of my haul are mostly notions and a few books for organizational type things um, and a lot of them were Amazon. So I'm going to try to do these quickly because I'm not sure how long my camera will stay on. I needed some more purple fangs. There's a good five or six in there. I'm always looking for one. I'll just probably keep them here in my center of my machine so I can easily find them. I got some binding needles as well as Lori Holt's Be In My Bonnet pack of needles. It has Tapestry, binding, sewing, embroidery, chunky, and applique. They just come in a pack with like a folder. So I can keep them in this probably and keep them with all my needles. And they are color coded, which will be nice. They have like blue will be the tapestry or embroidery. Yellows are tapestry, reds, chunky, etc. So those were some notions. Um, Riley Blake has a set, of course I did it because of the color as well as I'm always, like when I take things up to the lake and need a few rulers, 
I will use these. It came as a set of five. Excuse me while I pull them out. Got a two and a quarter, four and a half. No, that's actually it's three and a half, four and a half, five and a half, and six and a half. And I also have the real the the mini that came with this. I had already opened it, and that's kind of what I'm using for my quilt along with the the repro quilter. And then I also bought some circle rulers because I don't have any. This is a set includes four, and they are four inch. And oh, actually, they're smaller. Two and a no, two inch, four inch. Is that six inch maybe? And also a nine inch. So a set of four rulers. Yeah, two, four, six, and nine. <laughs> and like I said, those are Raleigh Blake's Circle Rulers by Lori Holt be in my bonnet. Hobby Lobby got a little attention. They had some uh just notion hold scissor holders on sale, three dollars spring kind of those will hold some larger scissors as well as uh Target they always have a few things. These are uh two yards and six yard cuts of fancy trims. We've got a couple greens. I went on Amazon to find some calming colors for my fall um, five small spools. They're 80 weight orophil. So they're the creams and the whites, off whites. As well as my small iron that I use when I travel. I went ahead and got the little quilted thing that you set it on and the travel case that will hold it. It's just a mini iron that I have that I, I I take when I go to the lake, so it's got a little handle. I can carry it in that. And then I got some more bag flex foam, one sided fusible. This is kind of what I use Pellon for the patchwork bags, project bags that I make. And then I also seen this from someone um, at Boxcar. They were using it to cut fabrics the last time we were there last month. And I thought it would make a perfect, I have a, a larger one that I keep here on my cutting table, but I thought this would be perfect for on the go as well. Just a small, and it turns when you're cutting. If I want to take that project somewhere with me, I'll have a nice rota rotating cutting mat. It's pink, but I don't mind pink. <laughs> and lastly are a few books that I have come across the last few months. This one's called Sunny Days, a summertime quilt full of folk art. So I am more primitive, so I picked that up. It's a Martingale book. I like Sherry McConnell from A Quilting Life. She had a book of 19 projects, creating handmade and homemade. Um, as well as, like I mentioned, I need to learn how to quilt on my machines. So Free Motion Meandering, A Beginner's Guide to Machine Quilting. And I know a lot of the books I have from Pat Sloan also kind of give me tips with that. So I'm kind of going to try to branch out when I go to do smaller things first. And I'll read up on that. As well as the Big Book of Civil War Quilts. Uh, Katie from So Tattered kind of got me started looking into different patterns and when I seen all the reproduction quilts I mean I just I fell in love with the indigo things like that uh, you can see on the front there's just all kinds of different quilts not sure how far I'll go into it my mother made me a log cabin quilt and I can take some pictures and insert them if I think of it of what that looks like but I would love to make as a first quilt also um, for my bed maybe a not a fall since I have this one but maybe a, uh, a winter maybe uh, well that one's blue and white so maybe I should go a different color I'm not sure but I have lots of fabrics I can choose from but I'd like to maybe floral a floral log cabin 
in in that pattern but uh, just want to branch out and try all kinds of things um, I forget who I was watching but they had mentioned this book by Rachel May called American Quilt and I of course had to went on Amazon and searched it out but I did find it and um, that will be some good reading maybe on the plane when I go visit my mom but just to learn a little bit more, it's an unfolding story of family and slavery is pretty much what this book is about. Um, that quarter shop, along with that uh, rotating mat, I'm trying to organize all my patterns. I have them in some folders, but I, of course, needed more because these ones are the real, I guess, the two-inch size. So I bought two beekeeper binders. To put more patterns in that I'm trying to organize. Sorry for the crinkling. So that was the last of my haul. Those are the kind of things that I am going to be working on as my organizational part of quilting, uh, as well as the quilting journal. When I get ready to do my whip parade, as I go through each one, I want to write them down in my book so that I know what I've got and I'll be able to keep track of you know the supplies I'm using in each one and when I started it I might not know when exactly I started it because I'm not as good with my quilting as I am with my cross stitch with keeping a little card in each one telling when I started it and I mean I can see what supplies I'm using when I open them but I, I didn't keep up with when I actually started all those I just put them in the bins and said, okay, as I pull one down, I will keep a record of it in, in one of these books by uh, Lori Halt, It's So Emma. It's just, they have them for cross stitch, they have them for quilting, but this will hold 50 projects, five zero. I don't think I have that many over there. I think maybe I have just maybe 20, 25 maybe, but I will find out as I'm recording. So those are some of the things that I want to do this year as well as just month to month. Like I said, I'm not sure how often I'll come on with a quilt tube, but I do want to keep them separate from my floss tube and my rug hooking and my, you know, beading, the things that I am starting to get into. I've got a couple train cases that I want to recover just all my crafting, I'll kind of keep that over on my floss tube page. And when you're looking for them, I, I'll, I'll try to separate them between my floss tubes and my quilt tubes. <laughs> but I have enjoyed always crafting, stitching of some kind, organizing of some kind. So I, I like to document it through these videos. And I appreciate you following me. If you like this kind of stuff, just like and subscribe. And share if you'd like. I'm um, not too concerned about numbers, but I do enjoy seeing those that are interested in the things that I do, and I want to share them with you. So thank you for following me, and we will see you next time. This is floss or quilt tube number one. <laughs> Hi friends, I wanted to come back on. I forgot uh, a couple things I wanted to add into this video before my camera overheated, but. I forget if it was Sherry from A Quilting Life. I was watching one of her videos on organization and how she keeps her stash of fabrics before she cuts them up and makes them into different sizes. And like I said before, I'll probably do a video of how I store my fabrics in a different, uh, maybe my second quilt tube. I'm not sure, like I said, if it'd be monthly, but my next one that I do, I'll, I'll probably share how I store most of my things. But with haul, there was a couple things that I, I got that I wanted to put in with the first quilt tube that I'm doing. She shared these, uh, someone had given her, I'm not sure where the paper went, but they're from Ikea, and I can kind of just show you. They're called SKUBB Scub. Comes in a pack of four. She had mentioned they might have them in different colors. Not sure if you're seeing that. But all I could find was white, which is fine. In here is white goes with everything. So she uses these and they're like shoe boxes. And I, what I like about them is if you're not using them, you can fold them flat. 
but they just oops, zip at the bottom and they have a little flap here at the top with velcro and what she does when she gets extra scraps of fabric she stores them in here and and they will i'm thinking they will like i said it's like an unboxing oh yeah this flips up so they will close up and you can keep your fabrics inside them and once it gets fairly full she pulls them out and then takes you know a good hour or so and sorts through to get them the sizes that she wants but so i went to, to ikea we have one fairly close here in the, in frisco and i picked up a pack of four of those and what i'm thinking of either i'll color code them or patterns like stripes in one and solids in another something like that and and use those for storing until I can get them cut because I do have them just shoved into a bin currently and want to kind of get those kind of things organized but while I was there I also got this little unit here which I think will come in handy it's not totally full yet but I've put some uh, of the things that I've shared earlier in my floss tube the fat quarters that you buy at the stores and you know they nicely folded the way they come <clears throat> so I thought for you know storage of fabrics this would come in handy and if I go through all the bins behind me here that are the cubbies and find other ones that I can use I also like when you go to Walmart you can find the yard cuts they fit in here nicely I've got a good uh, oh, what is that six each and there's three rows so or four rows so one one compartment will hold quite a few of those if i get more i can add them i currently have my top uh, the ice cube trays i shared i'm going to be keeping those at the top because that's the one i've been working on this year and i thought having it easy access would be good and then this one's still empty so just depending on what i come across I will have an extra storage but this unit itself the actual rack that holds the baskets was in the clearance aisle for I want to say twenty dollars maybe or fifteen I think it was fifteen dollars normally it's twenty and then you have to find the baskets for it and I think each of the baskets were six or seven dollars a piece so Ikea that's their pricing but that's kind of the unit I thought would Fit narrowly and still have room over here near my board to pin things up and not get in the way if I ever do get rid of like the TV or different things in here I might be able to set up a, a couple more but I do like that they're easy access and you can see what's in them so I thought I would share that I'm trying to remember if it has the name on it I think it just gives a number well, it does have a name. They all have names. Let me see if I can get it out here. J-O-N-A-X-E-L. And I'll put these at the bottom, but I don't know how close I can get and if you can see that number. But that's for the baskets. And I'm sure if you look up, you know, on, on, in the Internet, that'll pull up with the actual unit that these go into. And I'm thinking I got it backwards. Yeah, and there's a certain way they go in, so you have to just slide them in. And I, I like I said, I like the access to that. And I had some tiles that I had just stuck on top to make an extra shelf to hold gadgets or Kleenex or videos since my TV is right here. Um, it's kind of hidden behind here, but I've just covered it with that. But that's kind of how I think I'm going to store a few of the cuts that I get the pre-cuts and the fat quarters and in the next video I will go ahead and share how I store some of the other fabrics that I keep in this room it's pretty crowded but I think I've got it to the point where I can get around and get to my machines easily so thanks for coming along again like I said and we will see you next time